Customization. We love customizing our iPhones, so let's go. And this iPhone doesn't feel like me. Everyone has the same setup, so let's fix that. And now we're talking, this feels more like it, and thanks to the new iOS 18, all this is possible. This is the only video you need to watch. I will teach you how to create a one of a king iPhone setup. Now, first things first, the customization iOS 18 has taken a big step forward. We are no longer just tweaking home screens and adding widgets. We are going way deeper. Now you can properly set up your lock screen, even mess with the control center. Not all the customization options Apple has given us are my jam, but most of them are pretty cool. All right, let's start simple. Wallpaper. Easiest place to grab some wallpapers is Google search. Just save them to your camera roll. I like to search for my wallpapers on platforms like like on Splash, there are tons of images all available for free without watermarks. If you're looking for something quicker, try an app like Wallcraft. It's got everything from photography to abstract art. For my setup, I'm keeping it minimalist and artsy. But hey, if you're feeling adventurous, there's always that famous wallpaper app from a certain tech YouTuber that's been getting lots of criticism recently. You know what I'm talking about? I'm with you, buddy. Now the easy part's done, picking the wallpaper. Next comes the hard part, and I'm using that term very loosely. Apple still makes changing wallpapers more of a process than it needs to be. But let's break it down. Now first, go to your lock screen, long press it, then tap customize. From there, pick whether you want the wallpaper on the lock screen, home screen, or both. You can even pair different ones for a cool combo. Option two, two, Head into settings, scroll down to the wallpaper menu, and hit add new wallpaper. The phone suggests tons of options and wallpaper styles with people, weather, photo shuffling, and so on. But like I said, I'm sticking with the minimalist, artistic vibe that I saved earlier. Now let's talk about wallpaper styles. It's not just about slapping on a photo anymore. You can switch things up, make it black and white, do a tone, or even throw a color wash on it. But the lock screen customization is where things really go deep. You can tweak every element. Just tap an element and a menu pops up with options. Let's start with the clock. There is a solid variety of fonts, uh, thicknesses, and colors. Personally, I'm going with a clean and minimal vibe. And iOS 18's got something new. There's this rainbow-like clock option that was in iOS 17. Not gonna lie, it's pretty slick. And here's a fun trick. Tap the little globe and you can change the style of the numbers. You can go from Arabic numerals to Khmer, Burmese, or something more cryptic if you want to add a mysterious touch to your lock screen. Now, the widgets under the clock. Same deal, tap and swap. There is no shortage of widgets, and if you're looking for more, there are plenty of apps for that too. But honestly, something like Lock Widget will cover most of your needs without going overboard. All right, now for the cool part. Those buttons at the bottom. By default, one turns on the flashlight, the other opens the camera. I get the flashlight, but the camera, I mean, I can just swipe for that, right? Plus, there's already a camera control button up top. So you can change those buttons by tapping and selecting from a list. You can assign them to open the clock, an app, a shortcut, or if you're going for a super clean, minimalist look, you can just remove them all together. So far, all our changes have been on the inside, but when I customize my phone, I like to also change something in terms of the way I use the phone. And that's where the Moft Snap Invisible Tripod Wallet comes in. They are sponsoring this video, and honestly, this is hands down one of the coolest MagSafe accessories I've ever tested. Picture this, a tripod the size of a wallet that is also a wallet. Yeah, it's that small. It's super compact, made for daily use, and doesn't hog any space in my pocket. I can set my phone up anywhere I want on any flat surface and get this, open it, boom, done. Wanna see it again? Boom, done. It's that simple. But it's not just about the size or the design. The thing's got modes. Like, uh, I can go vertical for FaceTiming or get that perfect angle for macro shots. Need a video call setup? Done. Want to chill in theater mode and watch videos? It's got you. And also, it's a selfie stick. You can even use it sideways with standby mode while the phone charging. Honestly, that's probably my favorite feature. It just makes me feel a little more productive. And like I said, it's also a wallet. I can put in up to two cards and all the NFC cards will work no problem. And just the device 
device of this thing. It's like some next level origami wrapped in synthetic leather. Looks awesome, feels even better in hand, and it's just an all around useful tool to have on deck. If you wanna grab one, check out the link in the description. Trust me, you will love it. Our next step is customizing the home screen. That's where all the fun is and all the controversy. <laughs> If you've been with us for a while, you'll know in our older videos, we used to try placing app icons randomly on the screen. And to do that, we had to use transparent widget apps, which were honestly a pain to set up. But with iOS 18, you can just drag the app icons wherever you want. Bottom of the screen for easy reach, done, side stacked, easy. If you long press the icon, a menu will pop up. There you can see four options that let you turn the app into a widget and you've got four widgets sizes to work with, 2x2, two 2x4, two, two and 4x4. Four four. Once you enter the classic jiggle mode, a pull tab appears in the widgets. Pull that tab to resize it. Unfortunately, the size options are the same as before, but at least it's easier now. If you want to add new widgets, just tap edit and select add widgets. Pick the one you like and drop it onto your home screen. But if you're looking for more than what Apple offers, I recommend downloading third-party apps like Widgetsmith or Color Widgets. They've got a ton of customizable options for both the home and lock screen. Heads up though, some of these apps might ask for a subscription. Alternatively, you can look for apps with cool widgets. I, for example, quite like the Tomorrow.io weather app. Its widget is clean and minimalist and supports both the light and dark modes. Perfect for my setup. When it comes to widgets, it's really all about finding the right app for your style. I've probably gone through dozens of widget apps just to find a few that really work for me. Here's another cool trick. You can get rid of app names while you are in jiggle mode. Just click edit, then customize. From there, switch the app size from small to large and boom, no more app names. The icons get a bit bigger, but not in a way that looks ridiculous. Now in that same pop-up menu, you'll see some display options, light, dark, automatic and tinted. The sun icon here tints the wallpaper like it's always in the dark mode. Looks pretty sick to me. The light icons are the same as before, nothing new, but dark mode icons, that's where Apple stepped it up. They've reworked all their app icons for dark mode and they've made it super easy for developers to follow. Just look at it all. It's all a matter of personal taste, but I like these dark icons. I admit not all of them look equally good, but overall it's quite a nice look. We can still take it further with the tinted icons. And fair warning, this is where it gets a bit wild. There are two sliders, one for adjusting the color and the other for saturation. If you tap the color drop icon, you can actually pick a color from your wallpaper to apply to your icons. The customization options here are pretty much endless. You could even go full black and white for a super minimalist vibe. No need to mess around with custom icons and shortcuts just to get a clean look. Now, if you're down to go that extra mile, you can customize the widget page on the left. Honestly though, it's just a bunch of widgets stacked together. Same setup as the home screen widgets, nothing too special. But I like to keep it practical here, weather, battery widgets, reminders, and music. My tip for you is try keeping just enough widgets to fill the whole page, so you're not stuck scrolling through a bunch of stuff you don't need. Keep it clean, keep it simple. One more thing I like to do is get rid of that search bar at the bottom of the home screen. Screen. It's just not necessary for me. To hide it, head into settings, go to home screen and app library and toggle off show on home screen for search. Now the home screen looks way cleaner and I'm all about that minimalism. At this point, we are about 75% done. The last thing to tweak is the control center. With iOS 18, Apple made some major changes and there is a lot to unpack. First off, you can now create multiple pages with different control layouts. And the best part is that you can place controls wherever you want. Want everything lined up at the bottom? Done. Want a weird custom pattern? You do you. To start customizing, hit the plus sign, and now you can move controls around. Grab that pull tab to resize them, though the largest size is two by two. Adding new controls is simple too. Tap add a control and pick from the list. There's a ton of options now, not just brightness or text scanning. There are shortcuts to open apps, run automations, and more. The minus sign deletes the control easy. 
Now, here's one thing I'm not a fan of, the default connectivity control. For some reason, Apple decided to give AirDrop priority over cellular data. Kind of weird, right? Plus, when you tap the connectivity control, it expands into this bigger menu with all the options. Looks a bit clunky, to be honest. No worries, you can just add individual controls for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular to clean things up problem solved. And like I mentioned earlier, you can create multiple pages of controls. You could have a separate page just for connectivity stuff, another for music, or whatever fits your workflow. But personally, I'm all about the one page setup. It's just more convenient for me, less scrolling, everything's right there when I need it. So, after everything I've shown you, here's my final setup. The lock screen is clean, minimal, and honestly pretty aesthetic. Convenient controls here at the bottom. Moving on to the home screen, icons are placed where I can easily reach them, and I've got a couple wedges thrown into the mix. And finally, here's my control center layout. It's simple, but super functional. Feel free to copy my layout. I gotta say, I really love how customizable iOS 18 has become. There is just one feature I'd love to see Apple add. Separate control center layouts for different focus modes. How cool would that be? If you agree, drop a comment down below. And also, here's my review of the iPhone 16 Pro and a review of the regular iPhone 16 if you think about buying one. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.